Walter White used to pack serious pounds of the blue stuff, but what the heck was Al Wilson packing in his tighty whiteies? Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling for your top five SmackDown moments. This week, it was from Albuquerque, New York. New Mexico, brother. <laughs> New, New Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's why you're getting the Breaking Bad reference in there. Yes, I know that Albuquerque is not in New York. Do not... Was he a mobster, Walter White? He may have been. Was he part of the Soprano crew? New York City, damn it. Anyway, guys, uh, let's move on for that awkward uh, and embarrassing box there at the start of the video. And let's get into moment number five. And we're kicking off with the wedding with said Al Wilson. And just seeing this old man sitting here in his white underpants with like a massive fucking bulge, not really knowing what's going on here, being undressed. By Don Marie, this guy's got less intelligence and less awareness than Joe Biden does. Yep, uh, you know, I just felt sad for him. On one hand, you're thinking, well, he's kind of lucky that he's getting to be in a storyline feud with Don Marie and he's like, getting to <laughs> share a bed with Don Marie. And then you're thinking, wow, does this guy even know that he's sharing a bed with Don Marie? Yeah, he, he is pretty much Joe Biden 2.0. And you know, as much as it is fake and it is a storyline, I wonder how much Al Wilson was like pressurised into doing this. Like, we always hear about how like women are pressurised into doing stuff. What about fucking Al Wilson here? Was the money worth it, Al? I know he can't answer that, sadly, but... Did he think that possibly if he turned it down, then it would affect Tory's push or whatnot, or...? Right, so yeah, but here, we don't care about men, so anyway, Al Wilson here, the wedding, it was an absolute disaster, we can't spin it, but it was funny. I mean, it's been funny the past... I would actually argue the past couple of months, this has been the best stuff consistently on SmackDown. There's a lot of things that people say, the 2002, 2003, a lot of things that were done that were horrible and that, that should just be forgotten about and that people people should have been fired over some of this stuff in wrestling like the Al Wilson stuff like the Katie Fix stuff now at times was it a little bit embarrassing and maybe you can argue yes but for me it was still car crash television and I would much rather watch this Al Wilson Don Marie stuff I would much rather watch the whole Triple H jumping into a fucking coffin with a mannequin I'd much rather watch that than watch a 20 minute match with two vanilla midgets with no character no build no story no personality no nothing give me this stuff over what we're getting today in wrestling yeah, I would rather have something controversial to talk about than bland-ass vanilla midgets rolling about playing gymnastics. I mean, that, that's what you want. You want controversy. You okay. want you want people jumping on mannequins and coffins. You want people getting covered in shite for the top of the arena. You Re want things like this. Recently, Okada signed a deal for AEW worth $4.5 million a year, and if that's the case, then I think that Katie Fick mannequin deserves at least $10 million a year. Cause I'll agree with that. That's given me more entertainment than Okada ever will. Moving into number four, we have Dawn, Marie, and Al Wilson leaving the arena. They're about to go on their honeymoon. They're getting into the limo. Al is complaining about being cold Don says we'll get into the limo Al and I will warm you up and Fanaki's just standing there with his microphone I feel very very dirty I feel very very dirty so yeah Fanaki uh, he always said he was Smackdown's number one announcer I wonder if he is the number one guy in Smackdown would you say he's the number one Maybe not announcer, because he's not technically announce an announcer. He's more of a, a an interviewer. interviewer. Would you say he's the number one like backstage interviewer slash personality? Or do you think there is... like I mean, def people would say Coachman, however. I don't really represent Coachman as a SmackDown guy. I think Fanaki, you definitely do. Yeah, I like Fanaki. He's better than that other guy who I just can't remember the name of. Mark Lloyd. Aye, Mark Lloyd. Mark Lloyd's alright. Todd Grisham. To uh, that's no yet, though, is it? Uh, Mark, what's the other guy called? I know the guy you're on about. Josh Matthews. Josh Matthews. I think Fanaki, you know what, he's different. The accent definitely makes him unique, and I'm all for Fanaki. Like, moments like, if Mark Lloyd went, I feel very dirty, it wouldn't sound as good as Fanaki, would it? No, it wouldn't. It would feel very shit. So, would you, would you say Fanaki could possibly be the best... Smackdown interviewer of all time. Yeah, but is sadly for him, he's not number one on our moments, has no, he? No, so he is not. Moving into number three, we have the Kidman, Tory Wilson backstage Kidman. segment. Uh, Billy Kidman making fun of Al Wilson. I do, I do, Don, I do. So, oh, Al. 
Oh, well, I love you. Uh, it was, I didn't think Billy Kidman had this sort of uh, personality in him, but it was shown that maybe he's more than just a guy that can do a shooting star press off the top rope. Wait, wait, where did Billy Kidman go after this run? Did he go to TNA? <laughs> don't remember, I don't recall so, no. Is it if he just died? Yeah, I don't even remember him being in Ring of Honor. Don't, yeah, maybe he just retired from professional wrestling. Could that be the case? I don't even... Maybe he did a 450 and broke his neck or something. I, I actually do not know. I think I remember Billy Kidman wrestling into 2004. But I don't really uh, recall him beyond that. After that, maybe he's just one of those guys that called it early, like Lance Storm. Could have been. Could have been. Up next, we had number two, Smackdown moment. Kidman versus Eddie Guerrero. Not so much for the match for me. But John Cena came out cutting a rap on Eddie Guerrero and his new haircut, cutting a rap on Mexicans, cutting a rap on illegals, and I thought it was one of Cena's best raps to date. Is that rap spelt W-R-A-P? Yo, you rap my burrito, bitch. You rap my burrito, bitch. Your hair looks like Stitch. No. <laughs> you know what? Oh, that's a Disney character. Actually, look like Stitch. Why on Stitch? Aye. Aye. That's, yeah, anyway. that's what you look like. Anyway, um, Billy Kidman. Lay low in the low rider. Billy Kidman defeated Eddie Guerrero. So a good night for Billy Kidman. He he cuts a decent promo. He gets Tory Wilson to laugh at his jokes, and then he picks up a win over Eddie Guerrero. It's good to be Billy Kidman, and he is the cruiserweight champion as well. So. Aye, as long as he doesn't get bummed by Al Wilson, it'll be a good night. It will be a good night there for Billy Kidman, the kid. Billy the kid. And then we move into number one, the top moment this week. It was Brock Lesnar versus Matt Hardy. It was like a five-minute match, six-minute match, but it just goes to show that you don't need 15, 20 minutes, especially when it's on TV, especially when it's a mismatch, especially when it's a bigger guy versus a smaller guy. And for me... I still think in wrestling, when you look at like these smaller guys take on the bigger guys, if done correctly, I think that you could make it believable, like this match was believable. Now, it did help that Brock went into the match losing a lot of blood and had already been previously attacked, but still, Matt Hardy, at moments, got a little bit of offense in. It's not like it was 50-50, though. It's not like it was a 20-minute match where Matt Hardy had three, four-minute periods on top. He was literally, his, Matt Hardy's moments on top was literally when Shannon Moore would create some distraction or Brock Lesnar would miss a move and Matt could maybe get one move in and, and try and get a quick cover. But I think it worked. I like the dynamic. And for me, it was easily the best match of the night, my best moment of the night and my favourite thing from this week's Smackdown. Yeah, it's a match worth staying up to watch Smackdown, no matter what. It's a five-minute match, blood, spots, F5s, heavy-hitting match, get can't complain with it. It's exactly what it needs to be. As we touched upon in the review. No commercial breaks either. You, you, you don't have Matt Hardy putting a sleeper hold on Brock and then Michael Cole's like, oh, can Matt cause an upset? Find out next after the commercial. No, none of that shit. Hard hitting match. Boom, boom, boom. Matt almost gets a couple of near falls, but not quite. F5, good night. If you can't get what you need across in five minutes, then you're, you're failing at professional wrestling. Yeah, and unfortunately, 2024, guys, fails at professional wrestling. But that's our top five moments from SmackDown, 2nd of January, Albuquerque, New Mexico, brother, not New York. Not New York. I've had my Hulk Hogan moment. I just wish I had the Hulk Hogan bank account. That's it, guys. Until next time, peace.